Ryan here, and we're back with a very special episode. We're going to be talking about the bearded axe and uh, the years of observation of us using it to actually hit analogs like this and uh, subjects that simulate actual bodies. What we've noticed, uh, and this is the war hatchet here from Medieval Shop, which is a bearded axe. Uh, one of the things we've noticed is, although it doesn't have as much protrusion using it at the tip as a beaked or horned axe, uh, the back is not a point either. It's a large beard. It comes back towards the handle. What this does is lowers the amount of weight dramatically than if you had extra weight coming out. Uh, not as much as you would think, but I mean enough that it makes a difference in the balance and the handling. But what ends up happening is as you impact, normally with an axe, you're not going to overextend before you hit. You don't want to hit flat with the edge like this. You want to hit with part of the axe. So as you're coming in and you hit with this part of the axe, it pretty much penetrates, but everything since the focal point, the actual uh, wrist, which is your uh, pivot, it pretty much goes in like that, limiting the amount of axe head that's actually traveling inside the hole. It actually kind of gets stuck in there if it's inside of a cranium or something, to a degree. But it goes in so much more elegantly nice, the actual bearded axe, because it's also kind of slicing. The axe actually penetrates as it goes in and slices as it pulls back. So you've got a motion like this on the curvature of the edge, limiting the amount of edge that's hitting at one time. So it seems to work a lot better when you go to cut into a skull than let's say this design, one I love, uh, the actual beaked or horned axe. It's got a little, little beard, if you look at it, but the beard's a pointed beard. And yes, that's good for hooking and thrusting mainly but it's more of a, an ax for full extensions. You can hit with the full extension of this, and if this uh, was a clipped handle, which we're gonna plan on doing that later, you would have all this blade that could cut just by hitting with the tip as it goes by. So you can cut with the tip of this ax and thrust with it more deeply than you can this one, but for the actual use of hooking, of course this one's better because of the, the big, big beard allows you to do tremendous hooking actions and even hook weapons and shields in ways you can't with this one. Although this one doesn't get hung up as often. Uh, what we're talking about is this one, when it hits in that same manner, has a lot more blade that has to make it in. So a lot of times this one doesn't go as deep into, let's say, a skull as this one would. This one actually goes through much more easily and elegantly. We're going to demonstrate that today and show that type of hit. It's much more like a war hammer where you have the curvature for the ergonomic strike as it comes in. And I know it sounds insane, but if you watch it, you'll see exactly what I mean. It makes it, it makes it such a smooth blow that will penetrate deeply. All right, I'm gonna try an overhead strike like I'm speaking of. And if you watch, the man's head's about my height. I'm not gonna normally be doing something like this. For one reason, that's not good on my wrist, and I'm not gonna get maximum power. I'll be throwing this way. So what ends up happening, the impact's here, and you'll notice that since my hand pivots that way, you're gonna notice that drawing cut motion as it limits its uh, ability uh, to take up a lot of space and just go right in the hole that it creates. So it'll go in smoothly. Now, if you watch what happened, that pretty much did exactly what we said. <clears throat> I now have a hook right here where it's hooked into the skull, but I can still get it out. But look how beautifully it went in. This is amazing. If you see the actual damage here and how elegant this cut is in the top of the head, the way it split open and the way it went into the skull so effortlessly, and I didn't use a lot of force, it's because of the beard shape. You have the weight coming back towards the handle, uh, which gives it a nice balance, but as you pivot on the actual wrist point, as you swing the ax like it's used, and on the high head, what ends up happening is you hit with a limited amount of blade that now punches in as the blade is pivoting at that point and the edge actually is able to cut as well as cleave. So it's an excellent design. If you want to penetrate uh, hard material like the human skull, bone, or let's say through uh, multiple layers of cloth, leather, uh, I mean, I doubt it would go through mail like that, but you'd break bones under it, but to, to maximize that force, of impact, the, bl the blade shape is excellent, especially if something you can go through, like something you can actually cut through or damage. The axe actually has a lot of force that way, and you can see it. So I think that uh, some of the ideas of this mostly being a tool shape could be wrong. 
they might have loved it for combat just because it not only is it good for hooking, I mean, and it, you could hook with it in ways you can't with anything else, but also because of how easy it penetrates, let's say, a human skull. We, we've noticed that in other videos, even using this axe here, uh, the, the uh, shape that's a later century shape that what all axes eventually went to, which, yes, in a lot of ways is better for battle because it's more versatile. Uh, I think this one still penetrated much more easily into stuff like a, a man's skull in combat. So if you're wearing less armor, lots of cloth, stuff like that, leather, I think this axe would do you fine. All right, we pretty much have this hook in the head. As you can see, the blood as I'm trying to pull, the hook is in there. But I can still retract it the way it came in, and you get to see how it went in. This came in, and it turned right in. So we're not making that up. That's exactly how this axe cuts, which limits the amount of force. So it's, it's amazing what it can do. Go ahead and hit it again. Or you know what? I might try something totally different. I'm going to come in and then hook the jaw. Oh. Oh. All right, first time we got bounce there. Second one, I actually got a hook in there. That was me coming in with a hook and ripping through. Got a nice broken jaw here. That was from the force of me just bringing it in and hooking with a light hook. So it shows this could be extremely damaging. We know how difficult this uh, jawbone is to break like that. We've got damage all the way inside the head, too. That went all the way behind the jaw. You see how deep that went. Let's go ahead and hit one more in the head. Oof! Oh! I guess, again, you see that, that action or that motion that takes place. I think it's about time to finish this guy off. He's been ended rightly, and now he's been axed. So. Ah! That went straight through and took out the spine. Beautiful. Hope you all enjoyed our little uh, test with the axe as promised. We said we'd come back with the uh, war hatchet and that we love this axe. It's uh, Elgum's new favorite axe. Uh, we will be back and throw it later. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, be sure and go by and uh, uh, like our uh, Facebook page, uh, uh, Thrand and Elgrim's Well of Remembrance. Uh, you can also be a member of the boat crew there if you like as well, the closed group. Just, uh, send us a request and we'll go ahead and add you. Uh, if you can help us out, help us out on Patreon. That, uh, that's over there at uh, www.patreon.com slash Thrand. Uh, you can do a monthly donation there or if you'd like to do uh, uh, donations just like one time, you can go through PayPal on that same Thrand at yahoo.com is the ID. You can also send me emails there if you choose. Uh, or at the Gmail address, same address, but use that for the actual donations at PayPal. I hope you all enjoyed the episode, and special thanks to Medieval Shop for sending us this fine axe. We will be back with more. We're going to definitely do some major throwing. Barbell. That's fine. I'll just put like. I'm and not subscribe. worried about picking it up.